Over the last seven days, I've taken 285 free kicks and have actually mastered the knuckleball technique. Oh man, I'm not joking, I have it unlocked. Here's how I did it. Okay, it's day one and I have a secret weapon. The Jubilani. Basically, this thing was created for hitting knuckleballs. So hopefully, this little cheat code can speed up my process. So on day one, I was just using what I'd learned on the internet and that was to hit with this bone in my foot. Cut my follow through as short as I could and just kind of run semi straight on. Now, even though that knuckled, it was nowhere near on target, and I think it was genuinely just luck, because the rest of day one did not go like that. Ah. No, I talked too soon, this is gonna be hard. I don't think I was putting enough power on them. I need to hit them a bit harder. Oh. Well, I hit it hard. Ah, no, why did I do that? I'm gonna take them from a little bit closer now. I think I'm hitting them from too far away. See, there we go. Literally, wow, what the hell? Yes, I'm obviously very inconsistent, which was kind of always gonna be the case, you know? My follow through is a big issue. Like sometimes they're curling when they shouldn't be, um, and that's because I'm not stopping my foot in time or I'm dragging it too much to one side. Also, my run up feels weird sometimes, like I can't really lock in. It just, I'm just completely thrown off. So I managed to take a total of 49 shots on day one, with 37% of those being on target and 20% of them knuckling, which is actually pretty good, I think. Holy sh and here's the ratio of distances I took them from, because I experiment with that a lot over the next seven days. Ah, there we go. Big difference in them footballs. So not only were the footballs a factor here, because they were two different weights and that was throwing me off, but I also started trying some new things. I know this sounds like I'm a nut job, but I think the little pop into it is actually important. Oh God. Oh. After some extensive testing, I can confirm that the hop doesn't do shit. That was a beautiful one. So day two was basically a complete write off. Oh God. I took a total of 51 shots and only four of them knuckled. Now 33% of them were on target. But if I'm being honest, most of these didn't come off the ground. Oh my God. Like. Here's the breakdown of the range of shots. So as you can see, it was mostly mid to close range. I actually didn't take a far shot today, which just shows how bad day two was. But at least now I knew this hop thing didn't work. So at least I had that bit of knowledge going into day three. So day three actually went a lot better than day two. Okay, day three. Pretty good day so far. That one knuckled like. Go down! Oh my god, that was that was a perfect knuckle. Oh! Couldn't that just go in like, oh my God. But I was still nowhere near as consistent as I needed to be because the percentage of shots that was going on target was 40%, which was only 3% more than day one. Ah, this is so hard. And the amount that knuckled stayed the same. I'm gonna call it a day. I have improved quite a lot. The form is a lot more consistent. Tomorrow's day, day four. four. And I have something I wanna to try today. Basically, someone in the comments of the short I made from the first day of this, I made a short of it. And someone left a comment saying that if I want a good knuckleball, I need to take them from further back. So, that's kind of the tactic today. I'm gonna to try it out. I'm gonna come about eight meters back from where I was, maybe 10. There, will I get away with taking it there? Day four, shot one. Oh, I have to walk so far to get that ball now. So long story short, this just didn't work. This made it way, way harder to get it to knuckle and also to get it on target. No. I'm hitting it with my toes for some reason. I don't know if that's a, because I'm further away that I'm, my brain is kind of thinking it's a long pass or something. I'm in my own head right now. No. Now I really tried giving this far range thing a proper go and more than half the shots I took on day four were from long range and even though they did become a little bit more consistent from long range I actually felt like it was stunting my progress because I had to focus so hard on generating as much power as possible and I wasn't really developing my technique. Oh, what the f am I doing? Maybe it's because I'm not experienced enough. Like probably you do get better knuckle balls when you actually know how to do the technique consistently but I don't obviously so I'm moving back in. That was beautiful. Day four done. Hitting it from further back was the worst idea I've ever had. It was probably all right in the long run because when I eventually moved closer, the accuracy kind of went up and they knuckled quite a bit too. Yeah, my right hip flexor is kind of tight, kind of tired. I'll just see how it feels on day five. I'm not gonna go too close today. I'm gonna go a little bit further back than the last ones yesterday. 
Not a bad way to start today, lads. Day five is where I really start to see progress. Oh, that was a nice one. That one felt really good. I can tell the consistency of my technique has gone whoop. Which was true when it came to accuracy, as the percent on target this day was 42, which was the highest so far, but the percentage knuckled was still sitting around that kind of 19 to 20%, which was the average at this point. See, they're not knuckling though. What am I doing wrong? I think, I think it's the ground. I know I sound like a whack job right now. It's so inconsistent. Oh, fucking hell. And to prove that point, I decided to take a good amount of shots from each of the different ranges. So we're back to short range. Okay, I, man, it's the range. This range here, it doesn't work. The ground is broken. This, mm, lovely and level and perfect. Hey, watch this, I'm telling you, this is gonna be a textbook knuckle bottle here. Textbook, okay? Oh, Jesus Christ. Something's going on. And what I found out about this was, if the ground was even slightly uneven, it was infinitely harder to consistently hit a knuckle ball. Fuck it. No, fuck sake. And knowing this made a huge difference. There we go, that's the spot. I'm telling you, I'm hitting this at the speed of light. I have some very valuable data uh, that I can now bring to day six. Day six might be a very good day, I hope it is. Today was kind of mid. That last one, or the second last one there, where I got to knuckle from all the way out here, I'm so far away from the goals. Like, the halfway line is just there. I'll try getting Astro tomorrow too, so I can mitigate the inconsistencies. Um, you're not gonna believe this. I tried to get an Astro today, and there was a literal circus on it. Seriously, there's a fucking circus there. So we are back at this pitch today, and because there's only two days left, I'm going all out. <laughs> this is the range. Oh my God, my fucking left arse cheek, ow. So for the second day in a row, we didn't just see improvement, we seen a lot of improvement. That felt good. That was a really good one. Okay, we're going shorter range now because my body is too sore. I can't keep like proper smashing them like. So the ones from long range were good, but when I moved into the shorter range, it genuinely blew my mind how much progress I'd made from the first day. Like, see what I mean? I can actually hit them like as much as I want now. Oh, that was a busy. So the stats for day six were absolutely ridiculous. So the total percent on target was 62, which was the highest we've gotten so far by 20%. And the knuckle percentage was 53. So more than half the shots I took on day six knuckled, which is absolutely ridiculous because here's how I spread them out across all the different ranges. 37% were far, 38% were from mid range, and 25% were from close range which is just ridiculous. But it gets even more insane on day seven. Oh boys, I think if you wanna actually be consistent, it is all technique, like 100% technique. Yeah, see you tomorrow for day seven. This has been successful already, I'd say. So on day seven, I really wanted to test myself. So I obviously brought in a goalkeeper. Oh, how did you save that, you bastard? And for about 50% of the shots, I added a wall as well, just to make it a little bit more realistic. Oh my, that, oh, that was crazy. Like, that was fuck. And as you can see, basically every time I took a shot, it moved like crazy. Fuck, I need to put it either side of the goal. Why do I keep putting them at you? Oh, what a save. So the wall was actually no issue for me and I actually decided to take away. I just let loose to show what I could really do. Oh, oh, see, you that bastard. was... And the stats for the final day blew my mind. We had by far the highest accuracy, with 76% of the shots I took being on target, and 73% of them knuckling. That's three in every four shots I took knuckled, which is more than twice as accurate as day one, and more than three times the amount of shots knuckled. Oh! Whoa. Oh my God, that was a good one. Oh my fuck. Oh, there we go, right. Jesus.
Right, so now it is time to show you how to do this for yourself, basically, so you can hit a knuckleball every single time. Step one is ball placement. You want to hit the ball directly down the middle and just below the center line. If you hit it anywhere else, it's more than likely going to spin and you're not going to get the movement you're looking for. Some people like to position the valve on where they should hit, kind of like a target, but I don't think this is necessary. So step number two is your run-up. I like to take five steps back at about a 60 degree angle to the ball. If I stand any more to the left, I tend to whip the ball more. Now when I'm running up to the ball, I like to run up on my tippy toes as I feel like this prepares me for the next step but this isn't necessary now number four might be the most important step of all you want to hit with this bone in your foot this transfers all the energy from your kick through this small bone on the face of your foot allowing you to put all your power into one tiny point of contact helping to mitigate spin now last but not least is your follow through and this is kind of like the last piece of the puzzle and i really can't stress how important it is for you to kill your follow through here like a lot of the steps i've listed before this is also about avoiding any type of spin on the ball now something that i kind of learned to help helps me to do this is dragging my left foot across as it's very hard for your right foot to follow through if your left foot is sliding left it just doesn't work like now this next thing when you're striking the ball this is something you can use when you're striking the ball regardless of the technique and i link the video that describes this better in the description below but basically the longer you stare at the target you're hitting the more likely you are to be accurate so the whole time i'm running up i'm deadlocked into that ball and i try not to take my eyes off it too early the difference that made was Night and day. When I just stare at the part of the ball I'm trying to hit for longer, the more of them knuckle and the more of them go into the goal. And yeah, that's basically it. If this helps you, make sure to subscribe. And if you like videos like this, you should click the one here that's on the screen because it's probably really good too.